Um, good morning. My name is Martin Alvarda. I am not going to introduce myself. Oh, that's interesting. The middle piece missing. The middle piece is actually my Facebook page. I'm not going to introduce myself any further. I'm uh, simply inviting you to uh, join me and my 355 uh, virtual friends. Um, I promised um, to talk about changing consumer preferences, how agencies help us, all of this in a challenging economic environment, and all of that in 15 minutes. Um, obviously, that is a steep challenge. I really don't want to talk about just the recession. Um, I want to talk about how we are set up at the Coca-Cola company uh, for IMC, uh, which is Integrated Marketing Communications, and how that helps us to uh, build our portfolio of global brands. And yes, also weather the current economic environment. But Integrated Marketing Communications at the Coca-Cola Company was not created as a response to where we are today in this environment. It started actually in 2003 but it's actually turning out to help us tremendously um, in that environment. Um, it is going to be a 15-minute version of a two-day workshop, so bear with me. So I want to talk about, as I said, about integrated marketing communications and connection planning at the Coca-Cola company. Um, and I want to touch on some of our thinking about that at a very high level, obviously. Um, who, who would like to take a wild guess as to what year we launched a campaign for the first time that talked about launching a campaign with one sight, one sound, and one cell approach? Who wants to take a wild guess? Or who remembers, possibly? A year, any year? 63. Somebody has been to this presentation before. <laughs> it was actually 1963. <laughs> It was actually 1963. I was. Is there anyone old enough? There you go. Um, I was actually two years old, so I remember it well. Um, but that was when we, for the first time, talked about launching a campaign that had, as I said, one site, one sound, one cell. That line actually came from the press release uh, that we launched uh, at the time, uh, which I plucked from the archives. Um, Things go better with Coke was the campaign, and um, in retrospect or in hindsight, that was really when we started with what we would call today a 360 approach for, for marketing communications. At the time, obviously, we didn't call it that at all, um, but that was sort of like 360. Um, brand in the middle with its campaign and a bunch of activities around it all sort of tied back to that one particular message, um, and that was back in 1963. We fast forward to 2005. Um, this is uh, when, obviously, we started seeing uh, the change really taking place at a very uh, sort of steep level. Um, and um, the process that we started in 1963 through sort of 2005 really helped us to build the most valuable brand in the world and actually build a portfolio of brands. Uh, today, we have 13 1 billion brands um, uh, that sort of all benefit from that. But obviously, the world had changed, and we sort of forgot to keep up with the times. Um, as you can see here on the left, that is where um, in 2005, 35-year-olds um, and under spent their time. And on the other side, you can see where we were spending our money. Um, now, I'm not suggesting that we should shift everything from 75% TV to 30% TV, but certainly there is a, a bit of a disconnect between the two. So in 2005, we really started to become serious about changing the way we approached um, thinking about marketing communications. And one of the key drivers was the um, idea of clutter. We're all familiar with clutter, um, and certainly I think everybody understands the clutter in sort of the communication environment where um, we, we are all very familiar with the ever-exploding and ever-expanding sort of world of um, communications uh, options. Um, but we were also really thinking about uh, clutter in our own brand portfolio. We used to be a five-brand company. And by sort of the early 2000s, we had grown in most markets from uh, five to anywhere between 15 or 25 plus. Um, and it wasn't just our portfolio that was getting more cluttered, if you like, but it was obviously the whole beverage category, whole new categories, whole new brands, subcategories were invented, um, near waters, um, energy drinks, juices, near juices, and so on and so forth. So the whole category obviously cluttered as well. Um, and really all premium brands. There, when I grew up, there were two jeans. It was Wranglers 
or Levi's. And today, obviously, it's very, very different. There were two shoes. It was either uh, a Reebok or Adidas, and now it's obviously a lot more than that. But uh, when we compete, we really need to think about not just beverages. We really need to think about if somebody has 99 cents to spare uh, in, uh, in the teen target audience and they want to go and buy something, are they going to buy a download, um, a song on their, on their phone, or are they going to buy a can of Coke when they're on their way um, to meet their friends? And so we really need to think much broader about that whole sort of competitive category. So a lot of clutter in a lot of different ways, uh, fighting for attention uh, with the consumers that we were trying to reach. So we launched and for the first time wrote down the um, Coca-Cola way of marketing. And we called that the DNA. And we had never written it down before. We, we had never literally sort of written down, formulated, defined, and explained how we did it. And uh, that was incredibly helpful for us to do that. And um, uh, thus the birth of DNA, uh, where we sort of marry, whether you want to call it art and science, brand love and brand value, basically the left brain, the right brain, all of those things sort of coming together and the magic happens in the middle. And so how do we define integrated marketing communications at the Coca-Cola company? This is kind of important when you want to work with us or for us or um, uh, alongside uh, us because there's a lot of different sort of understanding and terminology. But we started writing down, and I was one of the, the people that, that helped uh, design that. Um, we ended up in endless debates, and we would sort of argue for an hour and find that we were talking about exactly the same but calling it something completely different or we were calling something completely different, but it was actually exactly the same. And so it was really important to define it. So you need to, in order to follow the rest, you need to understand how we define it. Um, it is a disciplined and shared approach to marketing communications. And it is really, when we talk about IMC, the creation of reinforcing brand experiences over time that make an impact on people. Um, in the interest of time, I'm gonna skip the other bits, but that really is what it is. So if we go back to 1963, we had this picture. And then obviously moving forward and with the whole launch of IMC and uh, connection planning, we started changing this picture. So the first thing we did is we said, it's no longer about the brand in the middle, it's about consumer in the middle. The second thing that we wanted to change is we want to, whatever we do, not just do a 360 with an idea or a brand in the middle and then some bubbles around it, but we really want to sort of put surround the consumer with whatever activity we do around the brand, we want to surround that consumer with what we call a core creative idea or the big idea or whatever you want to uh, call it. Um, but this one core creative idea that sort of whatever activity it is from the brand, it always comes back to that core idea that sort of really sits at, at the ground or at the, 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 the core of the, uh, of the brand's DNA. And then finally, it's also really about making choices. One of the things that I hear a lot is that I don't have money to do integrated marketing communications. I can only do TV or I can only do a little bit because I don't have money. I think regardless of the size of your budget, you can always do integrated marketing and it is about making the right choices. And the thing that will drive those choices is the consumer at the center and not anything else. And then finally, make it all work together, right? Everything that needs to reinforce each other and work off of each other.